Our panel will explore the future of GIS data curation in libraries, and speakers will address additional ways libraries have incorporated GIS services and um, how researchers are using GIS. My name is Cynthia Hudson, and I am the um, Digital Data Outreach Librarian at Washington University in St. Louis, and today I am... My talk is going to be less GIS focused and more focused on the tools that exist to help you curate your data. So when I say digital curation, I mean applying strategies and processes um, to ensure that your data is available and accessible and preserved for the long term. And there's a lot of free tools out there to help you do that. So um, without further ado, um, has anyone seen this model? Some people familiar with it? Yeah, I know you have. <laughs> um, it's a little hard to look at, I realize. But um, what we want to focus on is this red outer rim. And it's actually one of the most well-known uh, conceptual curation models. It was created by an organization out of the UK called the Digital Curation Center. And um, it, essentially folk, or it essentially steps you through the process of conceptually what you need to think of when you're trying to keep your data around for the long term. So if we start at the beginning, off the chart in this case is the um, conceptualization phase. So when you're, this should start before you even begin collecting data. You want to take the time to sit down and think through how are you going to collect your data. Is the data or the methods I'm applying going to answer the questions I have? Things of that nature. Um, how am I going to store my data? What metadata am I going to apply? How am I going to organize my files? best practices for that sort of stuff. Um, at Washington University, one new service we're actually providing that Karen touched on was helping develop systems infrastructure. So a faculty member comes to us and they're, they're planning a, a project that involves data in some way and they're like, well, how do I store the data? What do I do with it? And we're available to come in and consult with them about how they could possibly do that and using what technology. Do you want it on a SQL server? Do you want to use one of these open source or yeah, more open source sorts of technologies or what. So, a fantastic tool that was developed out of the California Digital Libraries is called the DMP tool. Uh, Karen mentioned it as well, or mentioned the fact that many funders are requiring data management plans. And this tool essentially will step you through the process of writing a data management plan. And you can export it into a text file and just include it with your grant application or if you just want to create one so that you, you know, conceptually have an idea of how you're going to organize your data. So it can be really useful in that regard. And it is free and open to the public. Um, you don't have to be affiliated with the university. There is an option for that, but you don't have to be. So after you conceptualize or you have like this framework for imagining your data and how you're going to do it, you then want to create it or if you're using somebody else's data, you want to receive it. And as, you, as part of the process of receiving creative data, you should be adding metadata even at this stage. I know it's, I mean, metadata is, I think somebody said the other day, it's like housework. You know, it, it takes a lot of effort, but it's, it's you want to clean house, because otherwise you just get a mess, and that's, that's no good. Um, so one awesome organization that does this really well is um, the Purdue University Research Repository. This is actually built on a software application called Hub Zero, which is an open source product. But it's essentially a two-part sort of um, instance. They have a place where faculty can work on projects collaboratively. So um, you can have various members, even from outside the organization, come together. They can upload files. They can, they can chat. There's like social features as well. So it's really cool. But then they also have this other facet that's the repository. So people can upload their data directly into Purdue's repository. And like I said, this is built on something that's totally free and that anybody can, can work with. And it's, I see like organizations and, and communities sort of going in this direction. It's, I mean, it's the equivalent of a very easy virtual organization in many ways. Um, people coming together with similar interests in one spot on the web. So it's very cool stuff. And you can work on metadata and create those sorts of things in there. Um, so after we create or receive, we want to appraise and select 
it, as cheap as storage space is, you don't want to keep everything. It's like we all have hundreds, if not thousands, obviously, of digital photos, but they might all not be good. And so it's really important to not, you don't want to keep all the bad ones as well as all the good ones. So it's really important to go through the files you have to make sure that you're keeping the ones that are going to be um, the best for the research you're trying to do. And there's different ways to do this. If you want to, you can just think in your mind, well, if I publish something or I put something out there and somebody comes back and asks me questions about it, what data am I going to, what is the minimum amount of data I'm going to need to to provide them so that they can understand that. Um, there's lots of different ways to look at this as well. Jove is a um, essentially a framework. It was created by JSTOR and the Harvard University Library, and it provides functions to uh, perform format specific identification, validation, and characterization. So, if you are receiving files from a, like a, a an institution or an organization and you don't know what's there, you can use the Joe framework to ask this group of files what they are and are they really what they say they are. And understanding what you have is sort of the first step in, you know, doing something with it and preserving it. So it's it's a good tool that can kind of get you there. Uh, after we assess and have an idea, we then want to ingest or take it into a repository and um, it ingest is simply transferring the data to a, a curated environment or a repository or something like that. And one tool that facilitates uh, the transfer of ingest is SORD, which stands for Simple Web Service Offering Repository Service. And it's just a standard that um, allows digital repositories to accept content from multiple sources and multiple formats. So it's something that the industry has set up to um, make things easier to share files and, and do those sorts of things. And it's, it's easiest to think of it about um, in relation to like HTTP, HTTP protocol. So in the way that HTTP allows any web browser to talk to like a web server. That's, that's what SWORD does. Another tool that facilitates ingest is the uh, Duke Data Extensioner. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, this just, it's a plugin that facilitates the migration of data off of disks and onto a server space. So if somebody comes to you with CDs or something, it can, it can look at those. And um, it actually creates metadata automatically as, it bringing, as it's bringing those things in. So once we have ingested our data, we can start applying many of our preservation actions. And these are the super useful things you want to do to check that bit rot doesn't happen, to make sure your files don't become corrupted, all those different things. <coughs> and one of the easiest things to do that's also free is to create checksums. Um, checksums or are essentially um, a unique hashtag that is attached to whatever, typically like a digital object. It can be like a GIS data set or something of that nature. And as I said, these work to detect data corruption, bit rot, and file integrity verification. So if you move one file to another, you want to make sure that it, it successfully arrives. You can attach a checksum to it. And there's lots of different checksums. This one is an SHA-2. There's MD5s. I think there's even SHA-3s at this point or something. So um, it's a good way to ensure your, your data, if you move it or if you do something to it, it's the same as when you started. Or if you notice that something did change, that, that the file was changed in some manner. So the next tool, this was developed by the National Library of New Zealand. Uh, it's a metadata extraction tool. And it works with a variety of file formats to actually extract preservation level um, metadata and output the metadata in XML format. So you can have um, images, PDFs, whatever, and it'll go in and um, pull out some preservation metadata for you and export that in an XML format so you can attach that to your metadata files. So once we have added all our, all our preservation mechanisms, uh, we want to store the data. One of the largest storage softwares available for free is that of Fedora. Are you guys familiar with Fedora? Anyone heard of it? Okay. I think Chris is going to talk about it some more, but um, essentially it's really fantastic because um, it incorporates all automatically a lot of those preservation mechanisms we talked about earlier. 
So it can, it can facilitate that and autom automate a lot of things for you. So once we have it stored, we want to make sure that the data is available for access, use, and reuse. One specification that facilitates the transfer of digital content is called the Bagot um, packaging format. And it's, it's just essentially a standard where digital content is um, packaged along with a small amount of machine readable text. So that would be a machine, it would be your image file plus um, some text that included your checksum or something like that. And it's just essentially another standard that we can use to ensure that once you transfer your data to a repository or to another entity, that it arrives in the same manner that you sent it. Easy ID. This is developed by the California Digital Libraries. It is a wonderful application that allows um, researchers at that institution to create DOIs. And DOIs are digital object identifiers. Um, some of you may be familiar with them. They're very ubiquitous in the like journal articles. But they're essentially a permanent URL for any object, and uh, a permanent digital identifier for any object. They can even be for physical objects, but mostly they're used for digital objects at this time. And like I said, they're, they're pretty well known across the um, scholarly publishing arena, but I can see them moving more into digital collections. Um, if you can imagine, if you need to cite where you receive the data from, a DOI or a permanent URL for that is going to facilitate um, metrics and citations a lot easier than a URL that could change over the time, or if the data moves, or if the site goes down. DOIs are meant to be permanent. An easy ID option that California Digital Libraries have put together DOIs are not, <coughs> excuse me, are not free. Um, actually, I don't know if that's true. I think there's different institutions you can go to, to to create them. And then finally, transforming the data. So this is the last step. This can include migrating the data from um, to a new format, creating a subset, and even adding layers. So one of the most popular ways to transform data or that you guys might be familiar with is like Galaxy Zoo, so crowdsourcing. Those people are um, going in there and they're changing the data in many ways by adding attributes and things of that nature. Um, map Warper is an open source map warping or georeferencing tool. In this instance, it's been embedded at the world map site created by Harvard University. And the tool digitally aligns and rectifies and georeferences scanned historical images. So visitors can even upload and georeference their own um, their own maps. But it's all based on open source software. So as you may have learned, there are many free tools available to help you through this process. And uh, we can talk more at the end if you have questions about other ones. Otherwise, I'm going to turn this over to Jennifer. And